you know, the, the, the dream started a long time ago. You know, I've, I've been a dog lover all my life. And, you know, we've uh, went through some changes with school safety and security. And, and we've always prided ourselves with trying to be innovative. And uh, sometimes innovative isn't your gadget uh, that you find. Sometimes innovation is rethinking things and doing things a different way. And, uh, you know, a after Uvalde and Santa Fe, uh, you know, uh, kind of changed the complexion. Uh, when I was in school, uh, we had Columbine. And so those are all markers along the way that definitely changed school safety and security. And uh, a lot of schools you'll see uh, operating and they've got technology. And, uh, and that's what they, they really value in school safety and security. And while we have technology, uh, the thing that we value the most is boots on the ground. And uh, you see a lot of school districts that uh, have, uh, in the morning, they, it's like TSA. They go, those kids have to go through the airport and they have to get screened for everything. And so several years ago, I just started thinking, you know, we, we wanted to expand the size of our officers, our school-based officers. And uh, not only that, I, I wanted, my, my dream was to have two dogs. One uh, that, that did a uh, uh, canine that did uh, for drugs, and then one that was kind of more of a, a gunpowder uh, bomb sniffing dog as well. And so we're kind of halfway where we want to be, uh, but we just feel that uh, he knew and what he brings to the table uh, definitely enhances our security and that's you know two the two missions we have is keeping kids safe and accelerating learning. And how did it feel for you guys to you know you wanted to bring uh, boots on the ground to the school um, you wanted to have two dogs so how did it feel for you guys to get that canine for cops? Well I think it was a, a breakthrough uh, because you know uh, the world is paved with good intentions and, and there's a lot of things in my head. I've got plans for Livingston ISD over the next 20 years uh, of things that we would like to innovate and do and improve. Uh, but so many times it's the, the funding aspect that weighs you down. And we spend over $600,000 a year uh, on school safety uh, outside of all of our extracurricular games and contests. Uh, the state uh, funds about a hundred thousand dollars of that so there's a half a million dollars that we could spend elsewhere but we're choosing to spend on school safety and so when, when we were able to get that grant that was a, a game changer for us so that kind of broke the ceiling uh, it put he knew in schools in our schools uh, and you know a, a dog uh, kind of in a school is not necessarily a, a novel thing uh, but most people rent those dogs, and so they're only there for a real short amount of time. So to have he knew our first school base officer that actually is here on campus, engages with the kids, and part of the climate and culture, I thought was exponentially a game changer for us. For sure. And how do you uh, spell he knew's name, if you know? H I N U. H I N U. And I imagine you're a big fan of he knew as well. Oh, absolutely. He's my he's my favorite school base officer, and and the, the funny thing about it is he's my cheapest school base officer too. Because you know the other school base officers that we have, uh, we have to give them a paycheck. You know they earn money. Uh, he knew works kind of for food, so I, I have to sign the invoice every month to pay for all of his dog food and stuff. So he's a lot more economical than the human school base officers. If you could say, uh, just roughly, how much do you think you guys pay for food? Um, well, we haven't had a full month of invoice on him yet. The, the last one was $30 and something, and but that was a partial month. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell me about uh, how you feel about Kino being here that I haven't asked about? Um, you know, just from the standpoint of, you know, our, our schools are, are different, and, and it's just, uh, you know, when I went to school, we didn't have school base officers. When, when, the, when the police showed up, everybody knew something was going down and somebody done something wrong, and he's just another uh, ripple into the culture of what we have. And, uh, you know, just I think it, it exponentially makes 
a big difference that he's here every day. The kids get used to him. Uh, it, it is a proactive measure uh, because the kids know that you know, we don't have lockers here at Livingston High School. Most schools that have been built recently, that's kind of an architectural thing that they went away from. There was too much paraphernalia uh, winding up in those lockers. And so now uh, the things, uh, uh, vapes are uh, epidemic in our society. And, uh, you know, the legislature passed the law. If you get caught with a vape on school campus, you go into DAP. And so those vapes are well hid uh, throughout the schools of the state of Texas in backpacks and in clothing. And so he knew there. And, uh, you know, he's walking up and down the hall and he can alert on, on a vape. And so uh, we just feel like uh, in the interest of all our kids, it, it just it adds a proactive tool uh, to what we do in combating that epidemic.